Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Kingdoms of Amalur Re Reckoning with me, Bring It Don. So the plan is to finish mapping out the northern coast this episode, knocking out the side quests that are located here as well. Uh, we have three to pursue. I think we'll go north here first. So I can fight this root golem as well, because he's already aggroed. Whoops. I'm not sure if he's stunned or not. Really digging my, my high stun chance that I've got going on. Oh gosh. Gosh. <laughs> gosh. Meant to say gosh. I think it's always worth fighting the golems and trolls because they have a high chance of dropping uh Good gear. At least a higher chance than most other enemies. I want to say I found a good chunk of unique gear on trolls at least. This time I block, that's fine. I really like the way the armor looks in this region. I don't know why it's so silvery here, but I I dig it. Though normally I am a fan of more copperish tinted armor. I think this style just looks better silvery. Maybe just because it's different. I don't know. So rose the river, and so fell the chain armor, the helms of iron, as bards sang thick and bedding beckoned. Up from the depths of blue deep winding, the terror drog came clawing at their slumbering horns, where warriors waged wars with wine dreams and fancy, alone in the fearful fasting. First one she seized up, alive with wicked pleasure, bones crushed and bodies beaten, as she painted the walls with gore, a screaming reverie. That sounds pretty intense. A cursed black sun rose high over hearth and hall. With dull blades drawn, they rose from cups, awake with horror, as silence gripped the tongues, grief and torment in Grave Hall, for Anrun had met the tomb. A long night's silence. By mandate of the High Spear, all warriors heeded the call. 
to hunt the beast drog to blood pall and fasting. With steel talon reach and venomous tongue they marched in her name. Anvun, Shadow Queen of Solsvar. So I do not want to accidentally trigger the next part of this quest, but it looks like that's going to happen regardless. I just want... No, I don't need to do this. I need to go over here. Hold on. Oh, it's down in the... Okay, I can't finish this quest yet. Alright, we're not going to pursue the main quest yet. That'd probably be faster to travel here. Okay, fast travel from here. Oh, gosh darn it. Gosh darn it. Yes, I don't know how we're supposed to get down to this uh, other location. We'll do it that a little bit. We'll probably end up starting that main quest this episode anyway. So I only have two other side quest objectives to do here. And I don't suspect they'll take that long. One's digging for treasure, the other one's killing the uh, the old the old scion. Nope. I remember this time the watcher will actually fight me instead of uh, disappearing like he did last time. Oh, what a pushover. Children of Aritho gloves. These gilt leather gloves. <laughs> <laughs> were once worn by members of the Children of Arathil, an extinct cult that worshipped the magical beings known as Arathai. Or Arathi. Yeah, Arathi. The vestments are now worn by the Watchers, a group of guardians who protect the Scion, spiritual leader of Gallo's End. Well, neat. I don't know that sound is. <laughs> No idea what that sound is. It's so annoying. It's like a some sound bugged out somewhere. Divergen Greaves. Oh, and they're might. These are ornate, ornate yet sturdy ceremonial greaves were crafted by Diverger Smiths as a gift for a human dignitary who died before he could accept them. The armor set features yeah, the armor set features the traditional divergent style, but is larger and bulkier, meant for more sh meant more for show than use. So I wonder if Ancient Gnomish text, cool. If all the buried treasure is gonna end up being divergent, like the divergent set, like that's the reward for it. All right, time out. Oh, sent her. <laughs> the car's visage. A talisman bears similarities to the carvings and artifacts left by the Arathi. Little is known about the face featured in the image, but it strikes fear into many. Castaways on Gallows End believe it to be the visage of the god Akara. Alright, cool. Well, we finished that. Atari's all the way up there. Interesting. Alright, talk to Aubrey.
Okay, that fast travel there. Where'd that can't fast travel to her? That's fine. I could before, I swore that I did. Maybe I didn't. Oh well. So we'll be there shortly. We don't have to worry about it. They're little bogger minions. These guys are not a threat. Because it's not really until they get into the, uh, they dig into the ground, that they become a problem. Oh, my friend, the scavenger. Listen to this, I have some wonderful news. I found another piece of parchment, only this one has a slightly different color to it. Older, perhaps, more weathered. It is all very odd. I seem to remember more when I focus, and your little quest has given me something to strive toward. All right, where are the other pieces? There are numerous Diverga fastings across this island, but I wouldn't stop there. There are dark corners everywhere. Watch out for pirates. So she gave us a scuttle beach piece, if I'm not mistaken, which means we should have all three for that. Alright, this should confirm whether or not it's going to be the Divergen armor set that's the reward as well. Which seems like it's going to be a higher quality armor set than the uh, castaway set. But we'll have to see how it looks before we make any judgment calls. in our inventory to the limit. Well, since we're here, we may as well clear out these other two loot locations. Or three. You just keep going. That's fine. I don't need more meat. I probably don't need as much meat as I have, but... Whoops. Alright, what do we got here? What can I get rid of? Uh, fair bit in the way, actually. So I good. get rid of that. Alright. What did I leave behind here? Oh, meat. I don't need that. All right, let's go grab this treasure. And then I guess we'll go back and talk to Aubrey. She'll give us another piece, which might be the third piece of the other set that I have. Yep, the freaking ch chassis. Yep, much better. So I can't fast travel to her. Super lame. Super duper lame. Hey, but the uh, bog thrush is back. Yeah. 
Hopefully they were not in a bog or on an island. But hey, well that's not to say a bog can't exist on an island. But he's not in a bog. Fine, do it that way. There. Happy game. I think next time I visit a merchant I need to sell a bunch of the potions that I have. Because there's a lot just taking up space that I'm not going to use. Just look at what I found. Another shred, but this one is larger and its lettering suggests a more recent Diverga script. How did I know that? Well, I believe I may have been a scholar before all this unpleasantness. Well, that's one theory. Not where are the other pieces? The Diverga tend to hide their valuables underground, but often somewhere near the water. Of course, Flotsam tends to ride the current. And we're also on an island, so everything's kind of near the water. Uh, oh yeah. Items. Hey, that's nearby. Sweet. Might get this whole set this episode. That would be pretty rad. my inventory. This is getting a little out of hand. <laughs> yep, there's the Curus. Awesome possum. Fast travel here just to save us some hassle. Then I'll have to get a grave hall keep and drop off some items because we are a little, a little encumbered. I've been longing to tell you the news. I remember who I am. My name is Aubrey Gilcrest, assistant to the great scholar Oath Beswin. We sailed from Rathia to conduct research for his newest scholarly paper. It all came flooding back to me when I found this bit of parchment, another for your growing collection. Aubrey Gilcrest. I am Aubrey Gilcrest. I was studying to enter the Scolia Arcana in Rathia when I took an apprenticeship with the great author Oath Theswin. We were traveling the Frostbreak Sea to investigate ancient Diverga outposts, but our ship was sunk by dead Kel. I am the only one left. Uh, where are the other pieces? Based on my earlier findings, I'd estimate that the final Diverga pieces might be located on the eastern portion of the island. You see? I even understand myself now. What a relief. Watch out for pirates. Okay, let's go to Gal or Grave Hall Keep. I'm pretty sure I don't have enough to make another map, right? Let's just double check real fast. Yeah, so I need... So we still need two more pieces for this set. So we need to find one more piece of the map. Alright, cool. And there's one more dungeon we haven't been in, so that might work out. Alright, Zephyr is back. We're not going to talk to him quite yet. We do have a new book for her to translate. Oh, oh, I adore the smell of this. Will give I should be finished trapped. Take care. 
All right, so another merchant. I'm gonna sell a bunch of junk that I don't need anymore. Try and clear out my inventory as best I can. Cause it's getting a little absurd trying to keep up with uh, my current habits. Something. All right, we're gonna keep all that. We can sell. I'm gonna keep all those. Don't need that. Really don't need mana regen. I mean, that could be handy. Let's start at the bottom and work, work our way up instead. Because then that way we can work through all the, the... See, I hate how they combine. I wish they, the crafting materials were separated from, like, the the potions. So I don't need those. Don't need those. Apply to all the minor stuff as well. Hey, cool. She sells... She buys uh, the stolen goods. Okay, that'll help clear out some of my inventory for sure. Really don't need more experience booster. We'll get rid of that. Don't need that. Oh. Yeah, we're definitely gonna hold on to that. That sounds good. Don't need that. The rest of these, again, I, I don't need... Yeah, I don't need duplicates, so I can sell... I don't need the intelligence anyway. We have enough steel curtain. I only need one stack of that. I probably only need one stack of warrior strength because I really only pop them during boss fights. Just go through and pop all of my uh, potions that I can. Don't need that. Really don't need this many greater damage, but let's get rid of some of those. All right. So none of those take up space. I don't need to sell any of those. I think these take up space. But I plan on using them at some point. Some of them at least. I actually don't know if the gems take up more space than the other crafting materials. I know that Till's collection takes up space, but we're still finding those. I think we need, what, three more? Or two more? We'll get there. I'm going to sell some of this stuff. Like, we don't need this much fish. We'll keep one stack of each, I think. Get rid of the rest. Actually, do you have any lockpicks? Wait. Oh, these all have different descriptions. So the Pestilent Paul. Adore the natural mana intensifying plants and glaze and crotic venom. Uh, these robes disorient any living creature that ventures too near the wearer. It is part of the elemental cloak, personal armor crafted by and worn by ascetic mages across the Frostbreak Sea. In the hands of the Mimic. The Santa Rapture fashioned from the magical Akara root bark found bound with it vines and blessed with the mana boost spell. Uh, they are part of the elemental cloak... All right, just the first sentence is different. The inside of this cowl bears inscriptions of protection and concealment to better hide the wearer. Living cowl. Then uh, these simple, or sorry, Crypsis boots. Uh, these simple, sturdy boots are fashioned from tanned Barghest hide and a chain of the spells of swiftness. Watch out for scabs. All right, let's head inside. Well, let's talk to Zep one first. Some monsters chased me away from that. It's all bagged up. Of course. You'll have to retrieve the loot. Be careful. All right, well, let's get this book translated. And then we'll read the book. And then I guess we can go after the loot. Where's it at? All the way up there. Of course it is. It's probably protected by a root golem at that. So it's going to take forever to... Get... Alright. 
Well, maybe we won't start the next uh, main quest this episode like I thought. Actually, I want to stop by the armory and get my gear repaired as well before we continue. So I haven't done a really good job of keeping up with it. It's been a couple of times with my hammer. It's like, hey, I'm about to break. If you need any black smithing, thanks for the chat. Right. Here you go. All finished with the translation. I the once crimble. worked with the crimble. They make great librarians. Very fastidious. Anyway, I'll be here waiting for your next farm. Take care. And we leveled up. Fantastic. Don't even put a point in persuasion because uh, I still haven't found the persuasion book. I think. Uh, let's see. Detect hidden is done. Mercantile is done. I guess we can keep going with stealth, right? Why not? Everything's done except for longsword and... Warcry. So let loose a terrifying cry that intimidates enemies, reducing their damage output. Can be upgraded to knock down enemies. Reduces enemies' damage by 20% for 6 seconds. Okay. Is it mapped to my... I think I'm less likely to use Quake. I think maybe I want to put it here. Keep my buffs. On one uh, Whatever you call it. Oh yeah, let's read this book real fast. Keep my uh, buffs on one skill bar, I guess. It's not really a bar though, so that, that's not appropriate. Whatever it is. All right, the crimble. Whoops. Let's take it forever to load. All right, the crimble. The goblin races we now call crimble and scrata were once a single unified race. It is widely misapprehended, even am among even our finest scholars, that differences between the two were due entirely to the Crimble's enlightenment at the hands of the gnomes of Marth and Roe. This is not so, and betrays an unfortunate gnomish superiority that mars much of our scholarship concerning the lower races. In fact, the Goblin Schism occurred a few years prior to the Crimble, arri ar the Crimble arrival in Marth and Roe, the result of decades, perhaps centuries-old cultural divergence within the race. Though it cannot be disputed that the Crimble owe most, if not all, their grasp of the scientific method, literacy in history to their time in Marth and Roe. It was the development of a greater intelligence and civility that led them to, led them to split from their more brutish cousins. As for the names of Marth and Roe, this act of charity was to be their unmaking. It took the less civilized Scrata several decades to find what became of the departed Crimble, but track them, track them down they did. It is unclear if their tireless search was driven more by vengeance or the desire to reunite the race. Martin Roe was raised to in the Scrata attack, and no gnome was known to survive. The Crimble, however, were able to escape in nearly full numbers, taking with them all they'd learned from our gnomish forebears, along with, it is believed, a few gnomish relics of great historical value. The Crimble then fled to Thousand Eye Gorge, a dank and unwelcoming swamp where they founded Marthenshire, and laid the foundation for a new realm. Foundations for a new realm. There they fostered the skills learned from their benefactors, and evolved into the exacting inquisitive, and dare I say, learned race we know them to be today. Despite their races flowering in Martinshire, the threat of a new Scrata invasion looms large in the Crimble mind. Though it's widely known that the Scrata have since occupied themselves with other pursuits. I didn't even realize there's two races of goblins in the game. Because I don't think we've run across any Crimble before. So that's neat. Oh, 
Alright, just head east. Go grab his loot. And keep on trekking. I guess we're gonna fight these boggarts on the way as well. Get some sweet experience. Oh my goodness. That's gonna get taken out by Boggarts. They put up a heck of a fight. Are they chasing me? No, they weren't chasing me. So why risk it? Yep, there was a of course there's a root golem. Come on, stun. Pretty sure I was still blocking there. All right. Zephwin, we'll turn this in and then we'll send him on the next one. I guess I'll fast travel to Akar Tor after that. And maybe call it an episode. I feel like we got a lot of uh, a lot. A lot of bunch. A lot of bunch of miscellaneous objectives see, taken uh, care of. I can go searching again when I do you see one you'd like me to salvage? Uh I go with the Verani longship. We're lucky their treasure's still on board. Give me a day to find you, Kev. All right, and... To a car tour. All right, I think this is the perfect stopping point. We're going to call it here. Next episode, we will... So the quest. Nina Malloy. Otari. Hmm. It's a big spooky area. Like Akara, if this is Akara's work here, doesn't he does not look like a benevolent being. But maybe he just likes red and black. I like red and black. Anyway, gonna call it here. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next episode.